All right, I think we've waited long enough. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, whatever time it is in your part of the world. Welcome to the Daddy War Crimes Woodworking Lair. And whether you're a villain or virtuous, whether you're a tunneler of the tubes or a doer of dastardly deeds, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are making things out of wood today. And uh, that thing we're making is a spice rack. At least uh, that's the goal. So far we've uh, planed and dimensioned the two upright vertical uh, walls of it. We've planed and dimensioned uh, six, six of the shelves that we're going to be using. And we've surfaced and jointed, surfaced, uh, face plane and jointed the tops and bottoms, but we still need to rip those and dimension those to thickness. Now I've got these pieces of poplar um, and I've gone ahead, so there's my face, there's my true edge, and I've gone ahead and scored a line. Let us get to ripping. And let's just figure out how we want to do that. But first, let's put on our uh, apron. Try and keep our clothes a little bit cleaner. Because before you can tie the innocent young maiden to the railroad tracks, you first have to attract them, and they are not going to be willing to get into your van, no matter how much candy you offer them, if your shirt is dirty. So let's get to ripping. Uh, I have got my handy dandy pencil. And a whole board in this little piece of scrap wood, which will give me a really nice offset to prevent everything from racking in my vise. And you do not want your vise racking, let me tell you. So this particular uh, set of poplar came from the mill at uh, roughly 15 sixteenths thickness. For the sides and the top and bottom, I'm planing those down to three quarter. And for the shelves, that was a lot of work because I planed those down to five eighths. All right. Now my Instagram post this morning got a like from uh, Delta Machinery who are the makers of my very fine table saw, which I am not using. That's okay, Delta, we still love you. Need to get some more room back here. Get stuff off the floor. Just making sure to stay off my line because I do not want to go over it. That final 16th to 30 second I'm going to take down with the plane. Let off a little bit of tension, bring it up, tighten it down, and we'll keep this piece still in there as the, uh, to prevent the racking. Maybe we can be a little bit tighter in there, can't we? seeing the activity I'm wanting on here. Give me just a second to adjust my software if you can. Not that anyone's actually watching this, I don't believe. Okay. There we go. Do we like that better? Connected to chat? Okay. There we go. Now you can't see it, but I can, but I got a number of uh, viewers in the top of my screen. So I can see that anybody's actually watching, which none of you are, so I'm here all by my lonesome, but that's okay. 
you can watch this on YouTube after I cross load it, which again, probably isn't likely. <laughs> Someday, maybe I'll get there, who knows. But at least right now I've got a schedule that keeps me in the shop for two hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if nothing else, it's motivation to get the work done. myself a saw bench. That's not today. Might make working these boards a bit easier. And also cross cutting. I could bring it over to the side of the bench. I've done that before. But I am unfortunately already committed on this one. Maybe in the next one we can do that. What do you say? Whenever possible, try and keep your lines that you're sawing on 
perpendicular. So even if you're doing like an angle, skew the, the piece of wood so that you're still sawing vertically. That helps me anyway. That way I'm not trying to become accustomed to different sorts of angles of sawing. Most of your cuts are going to be completely 100% vertical, perpendicular to the ground. So if you can just arrange your wood so that the cut lines up that way, that's going to make your cuts a lot nicer. What is this message? Messenger has stopped. I don't care the messenger has stopped. I don't need messenger right now. Facebook, you and your terrible software. But awesome market share. saw, especially as you're coming to the end, just let the teeth do the work. And it doesn't look like I did too much damage to the bench top, so happy with that. And that is how you rip the board. Or you use a table saw, that works too. Scrap up there for now. And I'm not going to plane this just yet because I'm going to rip the next one first. While we still got the saw handy and we're in the mood. But for this guy, I am actually going to go over here on the side of the bench. And the other day, I actually went out to the hobby shop and got some leather scraps. So, I'm going to cut out a nice little chunk right here. Do I have scissors out here somewhere? I might have. Oh well. Just cut very carefully. and have a sharp knife. That always helps. So this is this piece of leather here is going to actually give us a bit more grip. It's also going to protect the wood, give it a bit of cushioning, because this, uh, this hold fast will mar it like nobody's business. And we're just going to feel and make sure we're over the edge. And I position the uh, hold fast hole specifically to hang stuff off the edge like this, so it's pretty close to the edge already. And there we go. That's 
the cross cut. I don't want the cross cut. Here we go. side here. All right, that line is looking good. Now we got a little bit more dust build up because we're uh, got the board horizontal, so we just want to make sure to keep that clean so we can see our line. is something maybe just a little bit lower so I can still be standing and uh, have, have it so that the workpiece would be just slightly below my um, the end of my saw stroke. I think that might be a bit more comfortable than like a standard uh, saw bench. Maybe that's what saw horses are supposed to be for. But you don't often see people ripping on saw horses. This is uh, this is the workout right here. too tired or too exhausted when you're uh, working with sharp tools. Hey, breaks us and eat them. Get a drink of water. It's already getting warm here in the shop. Summer is fast approaching. I'm sure these lights aren't helping too much. I did go with LEDs though, so they're fairly cool. I ain't stupid enough to be doing halogens up in here.
pretty good. It's the saw's wanting to pull to the right for some reason. But nothing I can't handle. And as I said, that started to pull to the left now for some reason. Which is a bit worse. If you're sawing too far away from the line, well, you can you can fix that with the jointer. If you saw over your line, well, you can only fix that with more wood or maybe putty which nobody wants to do plenty, it doesn't stain right. close to the end, so it's really going easy on that. And there we're through. Another nice, lovely piece of scrap poplar that we can use maybe for something later on, who knows. And we are done with you, my good friend, the Ripsaw. Nice old saw from the 1920s. And no marring on the wood that I can see. Now we do have some lovely, lovely brown discolored saw marks on here, but we are going to take care of those real soon. The joints are plain. And I think the grain's going this way. So. ahead and get that set up properly. Now I am closer to my line on the face than I am on the back so I gotta pay more attention to this side. Each piece of wood has its own little unique rhythm as you're uh, skipping over the low spots and playing down the high spots. I'm reminded of a uh, something I heard on the radio. They were talking about um, these musical instruments that would use loops of magnetic tape and in an effort to preserve those sounds as the tape started degrading as tape does they would put these loop tapes in the loop and play them for a digital recorder and because these tapes are so worn out already as they uh, played them for that final time the magnetic material would start uh, crumbling apart and falling off. So as this loop played, it would progressively get quieter and quieter and the sounds would be, uh, the highs and lows would be rubbed off till eventually there's no sound, just the hiss of the tape. That's kind of what this reminds me of.
small section. That's all about the lights, see how we did. Pretty straight, are we squarish? Well, that's not really square at all. Okay, we are definitely bisecting the line there. And that looks better. It's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. We'll get by. Welcome viewer! Just saw you there. This is the Daddy War Crimes channel. We are woodworking. Feel free to say hi, ask me questions. I've got nothing better to do. We just ripped down these uh, popular boards and we're playing them uh, to get the opposite edge at least uh, flattish and parallel. That's some tricky grain, I think. It might tear out on this back end. Because it kind of goes uphill and then downhill towards the end. But we shall see. And once again, I'm a little bit higher on the left than I am on the right. Skip, skip. Love that sound. Alright, starting to get smooth over there, up here. Still a lot of work in the middle. So that means taking me off the ends. Come and they go. Time to put an edge on this. Seems to be biting a little more than I would like it to. Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go, fuel for the burr. I think I can do a little bit better than that. There we go. Now we just take the burr off and we are ready to go. The only thing left to do is get it back in there and make sure we're not uh, taking too deep of a shaving off. So just to get it adjusted in the plane. And it can move laterally as well as depth, which is unfortunate, but that's the nature of sharpening. When you take your tools apart, they move on you. Now I think the proper way is probably to elevate the, the plane on the bed so you're not putting the, the edge on this onto your workbench. But my workbench is some sort of softwood, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. Definitely don't think it's gonna mar the, the edge of the iron any. Because it's so soft and not really not too really concerned about taking a, a shaving off of the bench itself because it's a bench, that's what it's there for. Just trying to get the blade just peeking out of the bottom of the sole. Maybe a little too ambitious there. Just be real careful. Go to your lines and not over. Take your passes only where you need to. Not trying to make this necessarily straight. Not trying to make it flat. Just parallel to the other face which we already made straight and flat and true. One more for good measure. All right, three sides down, and now for the thickness. This is where the work really, really begins. 
All right. Out of the way. Take an opportunity. Get the scrub blade a little bit sharper. Glass cleaner. Works wonders. And you're going to burr across the entire back edge. There we go. Now this blade I don't take to the strop because it's a very rough blade. That and I don't have, uh, my strop is flat anyway so doesn't work too well with a curved blade. All right, got a bird there. Onto the fine stone, flip it over, take that burr off. And then finally onto our super fine diamond plate here. And I've got viewers again. Welcome viewers, we're sharpening. Blades are not good if they are not sharp. This is the Daddy War Crimes Lair. Woodworking supervillain. You even got the mustache for it, right? This dried off. Now, if you were following my Instagram, you might be thinking that I'm making a spouse rack. When in fact, I have been saying that I've been making a spice rack. Which, now that I think about it, I'm wanting to make a space rack. So who we got here? I got, uh, I can't even see. The name, e, the name I was given, okay. Good to meet you. And it occurs to me that I have actually not yet marked the thickness of these. Fortunately, I've already got my marking gauge set up because this is going to be the same three-quarter thickness as the size of the uh, piece are going to be. That well, was very nice to meet you too, Name. Can I call you Name? I 
Okay, so this is uh, three quarter that we're taking it down to. The board is originally 15 sixteenths, and um, so this is going to be a little bit less work than the I'll stick this in the vise actually than the shelves which we planed down on a previous stream to five eighths. And that was quite a bit of work. This is my very favorite marking gauge, which actually allows me to do mortises and tenons marking on it as well, because it's got the two pins on the other side. Unlike the wheel gauge, I don't have to go in a clockwise fashion. Uh, this is, uh, I would call it joinery. This is uh, woodworking with hand tools. Um, been doing it for a couple of years. Uh, getting more into it since I've retired. Not uh, too terribly proficient at it, but I'm, I'm learning. Uh, mostly just watching folks on YouTube uh, and seeing what they're doing, so you can learn a lot that way. If you're so inclined, I, I, I recommend Paul Sellers. Fantastic teacher. Uh, Wood by Wright's pretty good too. That's uh, James Wright. Uh, I retired from 20 years in the United States Army. So you get a pension from that and you don't really have to work all that much. And I started as a, uh, as a grunt, an infantryman, and uh, then later on, oh well, you're most welcome. Uh, later on, uh, when I got more advanced in my career, I discovered that I wasn't a very good infantryman and uh, switched over to career counseling. That, uh, that seemed to do better for me. All right, and since I got the gauge out, I'll just go ahead and mark this one too. Do everything at once that you can. And that way you save labor a little bit. If you got two pieces you can mark, mark both pieces. Now unfortunately, this is not the really fun part of woodworking. This is just the, uh, the grunt work, getting everything to the right size. I had a little burr on there that I needed to get rid of. Um, but once uh, once we get everything down to thickness, and this should be the last piece I'm really needing to dimension, but then we can get down to the actual joinery. I'm going to be cutting some, I'm definitely cutting dados in order to hold, house the shelves, and that's just going to be pieces or cuts along there that uh, the shelves will fit into. And to join the tops, the top, bottom, and the sides, I'm thinking I might do dovetails. Just because I really need practice doing dovetails. Uh, I've been having a lot of difficulty with my software here trying to figure out how I can actually read everything that people are writing to me and you know continue working. Um, I'm using a tablet in the Streamlabs app which works really great but you know just trying to get the chat to show up there so I can see it. I've got the Twitch app on another tablet down here, an older tablet, but I have to refresh it manually. It's getting annoying but now I've got it adjusted so I can actually read the text. So 
So yeah, I got that going for me. All right, two pieces marked. Now let's get them planed down. Debating on how I actually want to hold this work or this piece, uh, I think I might just chalk it up in the vise here. See how that goes for me. I've been trying to do it um, on bench chalk, so just uh, pull pieces protruding from the bench and just push against it. That wasn't really working all that great for me. And because of how I'm going, I need to. Uh, and cycle do this. Got to take off the back corner to prevent tearing out as I'm going across. That ought to do it. And you know what? Just uh. Yeah, I, I'm fairly new to Twitch too, but um, I had had a presence on YouTube. Uh, the, the trouble I found there was editing. Editing videos is just atrocious. They've got live stream on YouTube, but it's not as prevalent as it is here on Twitch. So uh, this is more of an open market, so I'm, I'm trying to get in here. I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a gamer myself. Uh, I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft. But, uh, yeah. They come and go. Woodworking is a fairly new hobby for me. Yeah, the, the thing I'm actually really finding uh, fascinating about Twitch and just live streaming in general is uh, when you get people, these guys who have a really big following, like, you know, hundreds of viewers at a time, and the chat is just atrocious. It's like scrolling fast, faster than they, you know, a ticker tape. I, I don't understand how they can keep track of it and actually hold conversations there. I don't have that problem yet. Got five uh, five followers and maybe one or two viewing at a time. So I'm going across the grain, so wood grows vertically and the grain goes with it. And uh, going across the grain is something you normally don't do, but I'm trying to take off a lot of a lot of material easily and quickly. So. That's why I'm going this way. Just got to be very careful not to go too far. <clears throat> and because uh, you can easily go over your lines. Yeah, I, I generally don't talk to people either. I'm kind of antisocial, but this seemed like a fun thing to do. So. It's easier for me to talk to people, I think, than to type out messages. And honestly, when you when you get those uh, popular streams, who's listening to you anyway? Taking off about three sixteenths here. Don't have too far to go. I think in a second I'm going to switch over to my jointing plane. That's set up for a bit of a smoother cut and a flatter cut because this the this blade is is actually curved. It's got about a ten inch radius on it. One of the main reasons I got this guy, so I could put the extra blade on it.
actually got the second blade for the for the scrubbing as um, part of a, a, a number six plane. And this is a number five. It doesn't actually fit in the number six because the uh, number five is a narrower blade. But it um, you know, gave me the extra blade and I, I happened to get an extra blade with this guy. This is the number seven, which is the same blade size as the number six. So I'm throwing around a bunch of numbers you've probably never heard of, but that's okay. Gotta have something to talk about at least. We plugged up in there. is not necessarily parallel to the, uh, well, thanks for the follow. The, the grain of the wood is not necessarily parallel to the actual face that I've cut on here. Um, and it, it really shouldn't be because grain kind of goes all kinds of funky directions. It's rare to get perfectly straight grain. So I want to go in such a manner where the grain is kind of going uphill as I'm planing, because if it's going downhill, I can catch the grain in the blade and then just rip things out, because that's uh, it likes to sever along the lines of the grain. Get a bit more aggressive, I think. Love that skipping sound. Just go skip, skip, skip as it's taken off the high spots. And once it starts giving you a continuous sound, that's when you know that you're a bit flatter. Supposedly flat, but in all actuality, not really. Well, thanks for stopping by. It was good having you. And thanks again for the follow. -up. I'm here every Tuesday and Thursday. You can also follow me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links down below. are 11 to 1 central time so uh, wherever you are in the world you might have to translate that um, but yeah I've got that I've actually got a uh, widget in in my section down below that will show you uh, what the times are up for upcoming streams and I usually announce it on Instagram Twitter and Facebook if you want to follow me there too Search, I've got links, links. <laughs> we'll make a henchman out of you someday. Take care, Nim. <laughs> All right, 
in the middle where I need to plane. Getting really close on this corner anyway. Got some work back here to do. All we gotta do is get it down to the line. No more, no less. Don't have to get out the winding sticks. Don't have to check it with a straight edge. Really don't have to make it square, so we don't need to get the tri-square out. Just work down to the line. That's all we gotta do in this last phase. No good sweating over your work. Oh, I've got more viewers now. Welcome. Welcome to the lair. Just doing some final dimensioning here, in case you're just joining me. It's a slow process, but it works. And it's good exercise, and it's fun as hell. Might have gone too far. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, dang it. Getting a little bit too aggressive, unfortunately. Hopefully I can rescue it still, salvage the end, it in the end. Okay, I missed the name. Who's, who followed now? Probably should have that on a little bit longer if I'm not going to be pay paying attention to the screen all that much. But uh, whoever you are, thank you for the follow. I'm calling that one good. Or at least uh, I think if I try to do any more on it, it's going to just make it worse. on the edge. Let's get this marked up properly so we know where to stop. Alright, so this piece is 15 sixteenths. We're bringing it down to three quarters proper. And I've still got a rough face over on this side, so that's got uh, milling marks, which we don't like. All right. 
chamfer off this edge a little bit. And now we shake the entire bench. And this, folks, is why you don't put the camera on the bench. So workers never learn that. Very, very careful not to go over the line at this point, because you can do that really easily with your scrub plane. And I'm glad I champed with that other, that other edge. That's tearing out a good deal. Scrub plane is a wonderful thing to have. Wish I had had this when I was building the bench. That would have gotten a lot easier. At that time, the only thing I had was a block plane, Granddad's number four, and the Buck Brothers number five, which don't ever get those. They are not very good at all. I mean, better than a poke in the eye, I suppose, but still not, not a really good plane at all. Find yourself an old Stanley, an old record, get it cleaned up, get it tuned up, they'll serve you just fine no matter how old they are. Not unless they're like completely broken and have aftermarket parts on them like mine does. This is not a great example of a plane. It's in terrible, terrible shape. I would not recommend buying that again. Green going today. Looks like I had it right. Skip, skip, skip. Love that sound. Each board has its own unique rhythm. They all end up sounding the same. I do believe it's time to hone this a little bit. Seriously? What's going on? Messenger has stopped. I didn't tell you to turn back on. I do not know what's going on with the Facebook Messenger today. This, I guess, is one of the issues with streaming from a tablet. I'm not about to bring my laptop out here. It didn't cost too much. Lots of sharpening because we don't want to go back to the, the diamond plates. Just keep a really fine edge on this and as soon as we start noticing it cutting a little bit slower, 
We're going to refine the edge a bit. Let's uh, put some more compound on here. And that's just a bit of leather glued to a couple pieces of poplar. What is this, chromium oxide? As so long as you catch it before it goes dull, you never have to take it back to your diamonds or your, your stones. Except I may have waited too long in this one. So I am not feeling the burr yet. There we go. Just barely feel that. Hit the blade, the edge of the blade about uh, 16th or so. Maybe a 32nd from the edge of the chip breaker. A little bit of oil on the sole. And we want the edge just to be barely protruding and we want it to be completely parallel. So I got it a little bit high on the left here. Just realign that. Advance the blade a little bit because now I can't see it at all. Seems a little high on the right. Let's see how that looks. We've got enough room on this so that we can... Uh, that's a little bit more aggressive than I'd like, but there we go. Oh, that was nice. Sharpening makes all the difference in the world. Alright, we're got a ways to go on both sides still. Not seeing any spots which are particularly high that I need to concentrate on just yet. That's bugging me. This is wanting to tear out, so I want to stop it before it gets that far. Now folks, you don't have to be shy. If you got any questions or criticisms, I'm, I'm more than willing to address them. So just uh, type in your comments and we'll see what we can do. That's half the fun of these live streams, I think. Otherwise, I'm just going to be talking to myself this whole stream. Which is not unusual. Focus a little bit more on the left. I'm getting there, folks. This is the last one I need for thickness. I'm getting a bit more friction at it, too, so it's not taking me as long as the first few did.
Middle does need a bit more tension. And I gotta say, it's getting really hot. I'm gonna grab myself a bottle of water, but I'll be right back. I'm going to be hating it in the summer. That's the problem with working out of the garage. You don't get any climate control. I would someday like to have my own shop, dedicated shop, and not be working out of the garage, but that costs money, which I don't really have. At least not until I pay off the house or something like that. We'll see. I could get a job like normal people. That wouldn't be much of a retirement, would it? Almost there. Just got a few problem children. We'll shave those off. And then we can figure out some datas, I think. Pretty flat too. So I ain't gotta worry about that too much. And I'm gonna call that three quarters. Okay. Unfortunately, this is the part that uh, I haven't really thought through too much. I know I want to do six shelves total. And I'm going to go ahead and set these aside. Just don't need those just yet. Here are my two side pieces. These are the vertical uprights. And um, here is the shelf. And we're going to have the shelves get data in. And the whole thing is being based off of these spice bottles right here. Because all the spices have been relocated into these. So we need to have just enough room for the shelf a spice bottle and some clearance to pull the spice bottle off the shelf in between each of the datas. Alright. I'm sweating so much it's ruining my mustache. It's alright, I only got another hour in this stream. So let's take a look. Actually, you know what? The very first thing I want to do 
is I need to true up one of these face or one of these uh, end grains. Since I know I need to do that, I'm not sure what to do next. Do what you know you can do until you figure out what you're supposed to do. And I actually made these, I cut these a little bit longer than um, was strictly needed. So I've got some room to work with. And get out the good old number 62. Hopefully we're still sharp enough. And that's, that's my true face right there. True face always up against the fence. Are we not cutting? Dados I need to cut, and I've got to figure out the spacing for the dados. That shouldn't be too difficult, but i still got to figure it out. Um, easiest thing to do, I guess, would be... Say an inch above the top of the bottle. I swear to God. Facebook Messenger is giving me nothing but trouble today. I don't know why. It's never done this to me in any previous streams. So I think the shelf plus the height of the bottle plus about one, we'll call it an inch and a half. I think that's what I'll do. Welcome, viewer. It's good to have you. I don't know who you are, but feel free to say hi. It's an inch and a half. The other two are very, very shy. Or at least they don't have anything worth saying. So it's uh, five and three quarters. And hopefully that will all fit on here. 
not actually sure it will. These are 42 and a half. Okay, let's do some math here. Where's my book? Where did I put my book? Five and a quarter, seven times five is thirty-five, plus five is forty and a quarter. Okay, so I should have enough for all the all the all six shelves. That shouldn't be a problem. Do I want to do dovetails at the bottom? Or do I want to do like a dado for the bottom shelf? What do you guys think? Come on, someone tell me. Dovetails or dado? Anybody? Floor's open. I can't decide. <laughs> I don't want to do more than some tenon. That could work, but I don't want to do that. Um, you know what? It's going to have to be dovetails. All right, so tails on the sides pins on the top and bottom. So let's see what we can see here. Oh boy, this is going to be, this is going to be some work. I'm not too terribly proficient in dovetails, so I, uh, I can't just do them like three minutes like everybody else can. You're not going to do them with all the ugliest sin. Alright. Um, let's get my joining pieces. So, I need to make a decision which one's going to be the front. So, I could just say that's the outside, that's the front. We're going to be joining like this. All right, let's find something where we can prop this up. will be the bottom piece and this will dovetail into it and actually let's see if how accurate this marking gauge is not accurate enough go to the square then. So I've got a square. We can just mark off that, right? I suppose. Let's 
not a great way of doing this, I don't think. Because I started on the back face, and the back face is not exactly true. But we can see how square we are, maybe. I oh, know, I'm making this up as I'm going along, guys. I... <laughs> If you were expecting a master woodworker here, you came to the wrong channel. Oh, can I do that? Yeah. This is going to be not all that pretty, I don't think. too hot to be starting to dovetail something. This, this is all really just a disorganized mess. Alright, let's try this again. The thing I need to do is get this out of the way. So it's in the way. We've got too many planes out here. Don't need my shooting board. All right. Knife goes in there. Knife goes there. I will need this. Okay. So the thing I need to do is get on my true face here and then take this board which is the board we are joining into, right? And I need to mark from this board a line for where the dovetails are going to stop. That's what I got to do. How do I do that? <sighs> well, since this board's the same thickness, I can use that to balance us. And I can flush that up. Now this is my true face here, so I put my square on that, keeping that flush, and there we go. Now I got a proper line. Mark that with the marking knife. Mark it again. Okay. True face, so ref always reference off the proper face so I'm not messing up like I did last time. There we go. And now for the inside. And I probably shouldn't have made a score across the entire face that's going to be showing to the entire world, but that's what I did. So maybe, maybe, just when maybe we can clean it up. And oh boy, what did I do there? Okay, let's let's fix that. That's the mark. Did I get caught in the grain or something? How could I do that? I was going across the grain. Okay, that's a square line. I like that. So, what angle do we want our dovetails? It's a hardwood, so we don't need to do like a really dramatic tail. I think this one that I've got marked here is about a one in seven. So I got uh, a line that I did mark on my bench, marked a straight uh, square line. And that's about eight inches. And that was a one inch. So if I if I just go off this line that I've already marked here, that would be a one eight. Could do that. Oh, 
Or I could say do a one and nine. Which is perfectly reasonable for a hardwood. Let's just go ahead and make a new new perpendicular. And go out one inch this way. comes out for a reason, right? So this one, one to eight, and this one here is one to nine. When you have your own bench, it's totally okay to draw on it. But yeah, I can use that as a for future reference too, so no problems there. I think it's worthwhile to have that marking on, on my bench. No. Oh. Maybe I'm not supposed to take this out. Oops. Let's go. Get back in. All right, one and nine. And I can't actually, when can I? Yeah, I can do that. I probably someday ought to make a dovetail template like the, uh, the real woodworkers do. block in here. I don't know, I guess this is still 15 16 and that's now three quarters and I'm dang it. That's three quarter. Alright. My dividers. And let's see, can we get two tails out of this? Do we want to get two tails out of this? I don't want three. I'm fairly certain. trying to do fancy tails or anything like that. I gotta trim this fuzz. That's bothering me. Don't drop the chisel. That's how you cut yourself. These are going to be. This one's my face, that's my face, okay. So these are going to be fairly narrow tails, it looks like.
But I think we can make do with them. I just feel today is the day that I'm going to accidentally cut my, uh, cut out the piece that I want to save and leave the waste. So I'm going to keep some proper marking. All right, now I need to get my angles. Bring this up and drop that on the floor. This is going to be tricky. I got to go on the inside of the bevel gauge because if I go on the outside, it's going to not be flat. I won't have a flat surface to reference on. All right. Now for this side, get my point in the line there, and down we go. And this one right there. All right. Now I'm not going to be marking the back of it, because why would I? Let's go ahead and make damn sure our waste is properly marked. And let's see if we're doing this right. We'll get the cut lines parallel to the margin surface. Perpendicular, I suppose. Straight across, drop the elbow, hold the line. Right across, parallel to the surface. Next one that's at the same angle. Start at the back. Follow the line, bring it over. Okay, straight across. Now drop the elbow. Follow that line. And there we go. Down to one viewer. I admire your commitment. Okay. Can't use the mirror trick on this one because we're not trying to go 90 degrees. Part of me cutting dovetails is because I'm so uncomfortable with it, I can't really talk while I'm doing it. You might have noticed my conversation skills have dramatically decreased in this period. Better with mortise and tenon. Still okay with planing, but we'll see. Getting comfortable with dimensioning. Dovetails still, I've only done a handful of them. And they still mess me up every time.
our handy chisel, get this line a little bit deeper. So we can write our saw in it in the groove. A couple little bits in there I want to get out. Alright. a crosscut saw for this, like my carcass saw, but for such a small cut I don't really think it makes all that big of a difference. Plus it's a saw I'd have to get out when I already have the dovetail saw up. Alright, let us start on, let's go this way. You know I have a proper size chisel? Nope. then explore our box of chisels and see if we can't find something a bit more appropriately sized. Three-eighths? Ah, oh, three-eighths will do us just nicely. How was the edge on that guy? It's a bit square. Well, you know, I'm going to put it on the strap just to be sure. Two passes there. Go. And let's uh, let's go ahead and secure this down. I do need to work on these hold fast because the leather I had on it came off. I'm thinking maybe next time. Uh, epoxy. Keep the leather on there a little bit better. And we're just going to cut a wedge out of this side, flip it over, cut out another wedge on the other side, and then everything will just kind of fall right out. But we do want to stay a little bit away from the final line just for now. We'll get closer a little bit later. Once we've got all this uh, waste out, at least the majority of the waste out, then we can uh, start scraping that, that final bit of end grain off and uh, make it nice and smooth. I don't want to get too close just yet because we'd end up crushing that end grain and that would look bad. We'd go over our line and we'd be able to see gaps in the joint. Alright. 
And I hope maybe you can see, uh, not really. We're just cutting a little notch right there out of the middle. Could use a coping saw for that task, but uh, the coping saw does not give you as clean of lines. You'd still have to come back with the chisel later on anyway. I probably ought to be using a, a sacrificial board underneath this, but I'm not. So I'll just have a sacrificial bench instead. not quite wide enough to take the whole thing in one pass. Actually, I might have gone, gone for a narrower chisel. That might have been a, a little bit easier. Oh well, this will work. Been watching the uh, the new Cobra Kai series on YouTube. Been trying to figure out if and how I could say integrate some uh, martial arts lessons into woodworking. I really haven't figured it out yet. I know there's the uh, whole sand the floor thing, paint the fence, but. Maybe it's just because I don't know karate. As far as Aikido goes, really the only related task I could think of was pushing shopping carts. So that really teaches you how to move from the center. A really heavy shopping cart, try and push it. You gotta move from your hips, you gotta keep your arms extended, otherwise you're never gonna get that thing going. The thing about walking on ice to teach you balance. So the problem with that is I learned how to walk on ice after doing Aikido, not the other way around. getting fairly close, and there we're through. This tool well was kind of a add-on to my bench about a year after I built it, and uh, I don't really think I did a great job on it. Okay, the middle wedge is stuck in here a bit, so See if I can't punch it out with something. Maybe the all. No. Come on. Come on. You know what I could do? How about this? How about we saw it out? No, no, that's a bad idea. chisel again. Let's see if we can't clean up this middle section. This is where you want good lighting in your shop, which unfortunately today I do not have. Just want to 
clean off the fuzz until we get down to our line. Take very, very light passes. And never go all the way through because that's how you tear it out. Those unsupported fibers. Put pressure on them and they will go. It's not their fault. You try to put them there. You're the one pushing on them. They just went where you went where you told them to. Fibers can only do what fibers do. Side ones. Let me get a little bit lower there. Someday I'll learn to not put my fingers in front of the blade. So yes, this is definitely not a three minute dovetail. I don't do those. Maybe someday, but yeah. right. Not even stumpy nubs. Maybe a little bit closer to April Wilkerson, but that's about the best comparison I can make. Between me and April Wilkerson is she's got a bunch of sponsors and I don't. She is cuter than me though, so there's probably a good reason. tails and oh my goodness it is almost one o'clock isn't it make sure double check here yeah it is okay um i may have to do these pins and everything off stream unfortunately uh, this is i'm not the only one who uses this internet connection and streaming does take a lot of it so other folks in the household need to be using computers gonna have to sign off. Um, thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, it's great having you. Great have, uh, thanks for my two new followers. Uh, the name I was given and the other person I didn't catch, but uh, thank you very much all the same. Uh, again, I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 o'clock central time for about two hours at a time. And you can follow me on uh, Twitch, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Facebook or YouTube. All of my live streams do get archived and uploaded to YouTube when I'm done, except for the one back on uh, May 3rd, I think, it says uh, some kind of corrupt file corruption, but I try, I try. Uh, yeah, hit me up anytime you want, and uh, hope to see you next time.